How can former President Trump defeat Kamala Harris in the upcoming debate and once again lead this great nation? What up, folks? Once again, it is indeed your boy Tim, the handsome liberal. Make no mistake about it, Trump absolutely can win. All of the polls show suggest that this election is very close in most swing states, so there's no denying that Trump has a viable chance at victory. We're going to do a couple videos because I've been asked this by several folks, in my humble opinion. We can certainly dispute any damn thing I say here. You know the comments are never blog banned or censored by yours truly. Let me know what you think I may have wrong at the end of the video or what you actually agree with. Or if there's a point you feel is missed, feel free to state that in the comments. We're going to talk about three different points on how Trump can win at least this debate and likely go on to win the upcoming election. We're going to talk about strategy. We're going to talk about attacks and counterattacks. Strategy is what he needs to do. The attacks are ways that he can propel how he is better of a choice than Vice President Kamala Harris to be president. And counterattacks are things we can assume that are going to be launched upon him by either Kamala or the moderator that he needs to be prepared for. So we'll start out with strategy because I think this is very important for someone like Trump who is not the incumbent. President Biden is the incumbent. But because Trump has served as president already, he has an incumbent feel to him. He kind of feels like he is the current president that the liberals are trying to defeat. It's kind of difficult to shake that with only 60 days to go, but here is the strategy. First of all, we often talk about the phrase, it's difficult to teach an old dog new tricks. Trump needs to learn some new tricks in this area. What do I mean? A debate is somewhat of a battle and... It, if you use the same maneuvers over and over again, your opponent can then predict what you're going to do and actually meet you at the pass and be ready to counteract what they already predicted you're going to do. Remember the old Karate Kid movie where Daniel used the crane to win the competition? Well, he actually used that same maneuver again in part two, the Karate Kid part two, and it didn't work at all. So people can anticipate what you're doing if you keep doing it over and over again. How does this relate to President Trump? The negative attacks. Now, Kellyanne Conway, Karl Rove, Nikki Haley, and a hell of a lot of other folks who really want Trump to win, Bill O'Reilly, have all stated he needs to get away from attacking Kamala Harris based on race, you know, based on whether she talks like she's an African or a black person, whatever you want to call it, or she sounds white over here. She sounds like she got a Southern accent. Over. Nobody really gives a damn about that. That works well at a rally full of MAGA participants, but on a national stage where folks are concerned about the economy, whether or not we're hit toward World War Three, the border and immigration, nobody gives a damn about that. So most Trump supporters, at least the talking heads you see on Fox and right-wing media are saying he needs to avoid bringing up her race or her heritage, who she slept with back in the 1980s or 90s. We're talking about the Willie Brown stuff, her accent and all of that stuff. An old dog learning new tricks. Being negative, you know, cackle, you know, Kamala Harris is cackle her left. All of that stuff worked well for former President Trump in his 2016 run against Hillary Clinton. That's the old Karate Kid with the crane maneuver that worked. Well, now we're in part two. We're in Karate Kid part two. Everybody expects him to do that stuff. So the crane maneuver is not going to work. Bringing up all of this negative stuff about Kamala Harris, everybody expects him to do that. So this is why we're saying he needs to get away from the negativity, the name-calling and all of that stuff, because I, I really believe that everybody expects it. A new strategy would be getting out there and just sounding presidential and attacking Kamala Harris on the actual issues, the policies of the Biden administration that a hell of a lot of people dislike and things that folks already believe President Trump might be the best choice for. All of the Republican talking heads agree. 
Let me know in the comments. What the hell am I getting wrong? Do you believe Trump should stick to the negative, uh, uh, negative attacks, the name calling, talking about her heritage and race? And who she slept with? Let me know in the comments. So now we're going to get to the attacks. And then we'll follow up with the counterattacks. How should he attack Kamala Harris? The economy. Number one is the economy. Regardless of how you may personally feel or how your own personal finances are, all of the polls show that most Americans believe that Trump is more viable in managing the economy than Kamala Harris bring that up uh, far more than her sex life, much more valuable. He should attack her on the economy of President Biden, the Bidenomics thing. A lot of folks believe that was a complete failure. Now, I understand political analysts, even on the right, believe the economy is doing a lot better than most Americans feel, but perception is reality. And most Americans feel like Trump would be better at managing the economy than Kamala Harris. He should hammer her on that. The border is undeniably a weak point of Kamala Harris. In this case, she can't even blame it on her boss in regards to uh, President Biden because she's on video saying there was no problem at the border for two, three years. Now, she might counter what he blocked the border bill or whatever, but it, he can simply deny it or whatever the hell he might want to try. I don't know if anybody's going to believe him, but the Biden-Harris administration gets very poor marks on managing the border. Certainly something Trump should hammer. We all expect him to, but if he gets to this right away, as opposed to negativity and name calling, it'll benefit him. The quicker, the better. Crime is also being tied into illegal immigration and migrants coming over here and harming the lives of Americans. In some cases, taking their lives outright. So crime is also... A, is also an aspect of American life that many favor uh, President Trump or former President Trump over Kamala Harris. So border, crime, the economy. And the last one is some folks believe we might be on the cusp of a major world war. Yours truly, I'm not necessarily in that camp. But at the end of the day, there is a hell of a lot more conflicts breaking out under Kamala Harris and Biden than there were under Trump. Trump is stating that he could end the Ukrainian-Russian war in 24 hours. I think that's a big stretch. But there are folks that believe, with his relationship with Vladimir Putin, that he would be more effective at calming that uh, excursion down than Kamala Harris. So these are the strong points that he could go at Kamala Harris on that most Americans favor him leading the country. The economy, the border, crime, and major world conflicts. However, just like he has the right to attack, there will be counterattacks. Last category, counterattacks. Number one is likely to be women's rights and abortion issues. Now, in addition to women feeling like their rights are being taken away, remember what I said about the economy? It doesn't matter what people are telling you. Perception is reality. People can tell you the damn economy is functioning well all they want. If you don't feel it, it doesn't matter. Same thing when it comes to abortion. Trump's going to get up there and say nobody's lost any rights. We just gave it back to the states where it should be. Well, the perception from women is they're losing rights. So that's, that's not going to work. So he needs to, get, he needs to be prepared for the abortion attack and be ready to counterattack it. And the, the, the counterattack suggesting that women are, you know, terminating the, the lives of their babies after they're born and in the ninth month, that's not going to score many points. That sounds great, once again, at a rally where, where you got a bunch of MAGA participants applauding, but most women are not going to, really going to buy into that. Did women, because I think he said in one rally, uh, in, in the state of Minnesota, women are giving birth, putting the baby to the side, and her and the doctor are making a decision on whether or not to terminate it. He needs to be able to prove that. If he's going to, if, if, because Kamala Harris is likely to use that as an attack. We talked about attacks and counterattacks. That's going to likely be used from the Kamala Harris camp as an attack. So he needs to show, if, he, if that comes up, my suggestion is he needs to be able to prove at least a case or two where that's actually happened. 
Because at the end of the day, most Americans don't know of a single issue where a woman gave birth to a child, put it to the side, and they decided whether to terminate it. This is that post-birth stuff. He's saying it all over the place. He needs to be able to back that up with a real-world example. Otherwise, that's not going to work very well. Next, January 6th and the alleged threat to democracy. Once again, he needs to really be prepared for this to come at him. He needs to have some sort of a counterattack. I don't know what the hell is going to be, but I'm suggesting it because at the end of the day, he was just featured on ABC News. Uh, you know, what is it? Weeknights with David Muir on ABC stating that he lost to President Biden in the election by quote unquote a whisker. He just stated the other day that he lost by a whisker. So he admitted he lost. So if he's now admitting he lost the 2020 election, they're going to bring up at the debates, likely, do you owe Biden an apology for suggesting that he stole it from you? Uh, do you owe America an apology for suggesting that you won by a landslide? And what led you to now realize you lost? All of that is likely to come up. And not to mention the whole event on January 6th, if you're now admitting you lost by a whisker, was completely unnecessary. And last but not least, do you owe Mike Pence an apology? Because you hold Mike, you hold Mike Pence accountable for not following your belief that the election was stolen, which you're now admitting was not. All of that's likely to come up in the debate. He needs to have some sort of counterattack when that comes. Either Kamala Harris and or the moderator is going to bring up January 6th for absolute certain. Next, Ukraine and Russia. You, and, and we can side note, we can also see Israel and the Palestinian conflict, but I think we kind of know where both sides of America stands, now, whether it's Kamala Harris or Trump. America is going to stand with Israel on that. So I don't know where the, uh, where the attack back and forth will go. My guess is both Kamala Harris and Trump would likely give some lip service to that event. But at the end of the day, we're going to stand with Israel. It's just a matter of how much we're going to stand with Israel. But we're backing Israel from both sides of the aisle. Ukraine and Russia is different, though. Trump is suggesting he could end the war in 24 hours, and he has spoken favorably of Putin and very critical of Ukraine and Vladimir Zelensky of that country. All of the Republican Party, with the exception of MAGA, is in favor of continuing to assist the Ukraine. He'll have to explain that, no doubt. He needs to have a counterattack for that. Next, we're getting lower on some of these issues, but Project 2025, he absolutely needs a counterattack for that. That's going to come up. And at this point, simply saying, I don't have anything to do with it, I don't condone it, probably not going to be enough in the eyes of some Americans. Very similar to Barack Obama suggesting he didn't want to take anybody's firearms away or infringe on the Second Amendment. There's a large crowd of people that wasn't going to believe him no matter what the hell he said. Project 2025 for President Trump, former President Trump, is pretty much the same thing. Simply saying I don't have anything to do with it when your name is all throughout the document, 900 page document, a lot of folks served on your administration, worked closely with you, and they're citing your name dozens of times throughout this document. There's video of you at the Heritage Foundation, the creators of this document, raising money and speaking positively on their behalf. The links between the Heritage Foundation, former President Trump, and Project 2025 are numerous. Just simply saying, I ain't got nothing to do with it probably not going to be sufficient. My guess is if it comes up at the debate and he says he has nothing to do with it, there will be follow-up questions. Similar to what I just said, if you don't have nothing to do with it, how do you feel about your this member of your administration being part of it and using your name? You have to answer all those questions. We've seen Trump certainly being capable of speaking out when he thinks something is wrong or thinks something is mistreating him needlessly. 
He needs to be a lot more vocal on Project 2025. We'll see what happens at the debate. But just simply saying I don't have nothing to do with it probably won't work in his favor. Like I said, counterattacks are necessary. Last but not least, while we readily admit immigration is a weakness for Kamala Harris, President Trump has statements on what's going on at the border that could be a weakness for him such as stating that there's 10 million illegals in the country one day and then said it's as many as 18 million within a week or so. His numbers and his claims could actually be a weakness for him because some suggest that he is throwing wild information out there to simply fear monger, such as, you know, they're sending rapists and murders and all of this stuff. Well, you need to have a hell of a lot of evidence of rapes and murders. That could be asked by either Kamala Harris and or the moderators. We got a major issue at the border, but is it as bad as you're stating? He needs to have a counterattack for folks who may suggest that he's claiming that countries are letting their prisons out, they're letting their insane asylums out, and sending folks over here to literally harm everybody. That is what he is saying. So he needs to have a counterattack. If that comes up in effort to harm him, from Kamala Harris or the moderator. He needs to be to back up some of those claims. So we'll see what's going on. Another smaller issue, I don't know if it'll come up too much, but the whole transgender community. We can say LGBTQIA and all, but it's predominantly the transgender community. Trump has also had a lot to say in regards to that. That could be used as an attack towards him, such as kids are going to school one gender being operated on without their parental consent, coming home a totally different gender. Now, yours truly, I don't have any <laughs> any belief that that's actually taking place, but nevertheless, former President Trump is saying things like that, that children are having gender, you know, reassigning gender surgery and all of this stuff at the behest of the school without any parental consent. He needs to be able to, you know, show some actual tangible cases where this stuff is happening. And we'll see what happens. But I do believe that, once again, these are things he needs to be ready for in terms of counterattacks. Because Kamala Harris could bring it up in a suggestion that, look, this guy is just looking to trash the LGBT community. So he's making up this wild stuff. So with the immigrant immigration issue at the border and the LGBT community... He needs to be prepared to answer for some abortion too. The whole, you know, putting the baby to the side and decide. He needs to be able to answer to those statements. Otherwise, they could be used against him as opposed to in his defense. Let your boy know in the comments. At the end of the day, I do believe Trump can win the debate, possibly get reelected as well. But there is, as I said, a strategy that must be adhered to. He needs to be ready to attack on issues that America is concerned with and have counterattacks for areas where people may perceive him as being weak. Let me know in the comments, what did I miss? What did I get wrong? You know, we don't block, ban, or censor. We'll have the second video on the behalf of Kamala Harris, how she can win. Necessary strategies, counterattacks, and attacks for Kamala Harris to become president as well. That'll be a second video. See you in the comments. As always, feel free to smash that like button. Follow the program. Click the notifications. See you in the next video.